The Last of Us 2 is a game, I don't know, it's like Uncharted, but sad. Instead of being a fun adventure guy, you're just a sad, sad lesbian. Which is fine, I mean, we don't get many sad lesbian protagonists, so it's kind of a change of pace. But God, is she sad. What a depressing game this is. Anyway, the sad lesbian is sad because the guy from the last game gets his brain hotshot golfed into oblivion. <laughs> This big gal Abby kills him because Joel killed her poppy pop. I guess this scene made a lot of people mad, but I didn't care because I'm not the kind of guy who gets attached to video game characters. Oh no, Master Chief, I hope Master Chief's okay. No, don't care. But I get why people are pissed. They had a strange attachment to this mass murderer who I think killed like 100 people in the last game. I mean, what did you want to have happen? Did you want the whole game Joel just stays safe in camp drinking coffee and playing guitar? You wanted Uncle Joel's coffee sipping guitar hero? He had a full character arc already, get over it. So anyway, our sad lesbian hero is now an angry lesbian hero. She's mad that big ol' Abby Armstrong did her boy wrong and she's out for revenge. So then we get what starts off as a fun lesbian horse riding puzzle solving adventure. Gotta figure out how to get the generator running, gotta toss some ropes over some stuff. But then your horse gets blown the f*** up and they stop all the fun puzzles and they just make you do the same combat sequence over and over again. You sneak around, you stab a guy in the neck, you sneak around some more. If you're me, you suck at sneaking around so somebody sees you. So then you just go nuts and kill everybody. Stabbing them, shooting them, get them with the fire axe. This lesbian's real mad, don't you get in her way. Now in this game, sometimes you fight people, sometimes you fight zombies. I don't really know why the zombies are still in this franchise because they got pretty much nothing to do with the plot. I think he could have said all the zombies died off and had a way more cohesive story about people who hate other people. But instead you got these stupid looking Resident Evil boss battles. Ah, big monster, oh no. Thrilling combat, gotta keep walking backwards and shoot it a hundred times. Oh no, big monster. Now it's not like the combat is bad, it's just kind of repetitive. You have a couple little tools you get, you get some bombs, you get some exploding arrows. But man, it just makes me wish I was playing Metal Gear Solid 5. That game is a murder buffet, you can do whatever you want. You can let your dog rip a guy's throat out, you can drop a truck on a guy. You can put C4 on a guy's butthole, wait for him to drive all the way back to camp, then blow up him and four of his buddies. But they ain't got none of that in this game. You either play Sneaky Ninja and watch the same stab animation 50 times, or you play Johnny's third person cover shooter 2009. Again, it's fine. I'm not saying this game needs butthole bombs. I just wish there was a little bit more going on. Anyway, our sad angry lesbian protagonist keeps chasing after big ol' Abby. Kills all of Abby's friends. Kills Abby's dog. Then she kills a pregnant lady, which is probably the most pussy thing in the whole game, cause it's a goddamn cutscene. Man, you pussied out hard, Neil Cuckman. It would have been fucking hilarious if you forced all these wimpy game journalists to murder the shit out of a pregnant lady. You wouldn't have got no 10 out of 10. You would have got a million stupid articles about how the evil Neil Cuckman Cuckman forces the player to kill an unborn baby. But no, this game is a child's toy. It pretends to confront the player with the horrifying reality of murder, but then it slaps your hands away and kills the pregnant lady for you. What kind of pussy shit is that? See me, I don't care about killing a virtual pregnant lady, which is kind of the problem with these games. They want you to think killing is bad, you shouldn't kill people, killing people is wrong. But then the game is like, hey, you can throw a Molotov and set this guy on fire, it's fucking hilarious. So what is it, game? Is murder a terrible, awful thing? Or is murder super fun and if you aim for the head, you get to watch it explode in a thrilling shower of blood. Pick a lane, you can't have both. Anyway, you kill all Abby's friends, then you gotta play as Abby. You go back in time, learn a lesson about killing. All those people you killed, all those people. Don't you feel awful knowing they had families and ate burritos and worked out at the gym? No, killing them was still real fun. I wanted to stab that pregnant lady, Neil Cuckman. I would have enjoyed it. Maybe I feel a little bit bad for killing the dog, but that's just cause I like dogs. I like dogs more than people. Later, you gotta play fetch with the dog and the game is like, look at how much fun it is to play with this dog. Why'd you kill that dog? Motherfucker was a QTE sequence. I did not have a choice. Stop trying to teach me a lesson. The only lesson I've learned is killing is fun, and Neil Cuckman is a pussy who won't let me stab a pregnant lady. Anyway, Abby is a big mean bear of a woman. She's a homewrecker too, sleeps with a married man. You're a bad lady, Abby Armstrong. That man has a child on the way. Stop tempting him with your tight abs and tree trunk arms. But then Abby meets the last airbender and everything changes. All of a sudden she cares about people. We gotta go to the hospital to get medicine for the airbender's sister. Gotta go to the village to try and save the airbender's mom. Abby just loves the fucking airbender so much that she betrays her comrades and starts killing them. She says, you leave me and the airbender alone, we gotta go stop the fire nation. Then you find out the airbender is transgender. So I guess you could say he's also the last gender bender. God, I hate that joke, but the people who watch my game stream said they liked it, so. 
You tell me. Anyway, you save the last gender bender, you come home, everybody's dead. Abby gets real mad, goes and beats the shit out of the sad, sad lesbian. Almost kills her pregnant girlfriend too, but the airbender's like, no, the four nations would not want this. So Abby spares Ellie again, and the game ends. Everybody learned a lesson about revenge. Don't do it or all your friends die. Good lesson. Game over. Gotcha. Game's still going for some reason. Now we gotta go to a farm. You go, okay, I guess Ellie has a farm. Good ending. She gets a farm. Everybody's happy. Life moves on. Gotcha. Still going. Joel's dumbass brother is like, hey, remember that big old lady who kicked your ass twice now? Third time's the charm. We got her this time. And Ellie, who is the dumbest sad lesbian in the history of the world, is like, yeah, this time. This time it's all gonna work out. You dumb bitch, just stay home. Play some records. Go can some vegetables. Why you gotta drag this game out another five goddamn hours? So then we get the worst part of the game where you gotta find big ol' Abby again. Bunch more shooting, bunch more stupid zombies. This time you can release the zombies and have them fight the bad guys, which is maybe the most clever thing this game does in its entire 25 hour playtime. You find Abby, she's playing Passion of the Christ. You gotta save her, you save the last airbender, everybody goes to the boats. And that's game over. Ellie learned her lesson. You see, Abby was gonna die even without Ellie's intervention, because that's the way life is. All men must die. Yes, some sooner rather than later, but what is the importance in killing a man who is already destined to perish? Ellie learns that we're all just dust in the wind, and the emotional wounds we afflict upon each other are temporary scars that will all fade as we someday return to the earth. Nope, gotcha, Ellie didn't learn shit. It's revenge time. Not only that, but she challenges Abby to a duel. Why? You want revenge so bad, just shoot her in the head. Be done with it. Abby's been hanging on a cross for days. She's dehydrated, close to death, fighting with her bare hands. And you've got a goddamn knife. This is not a fair fight, you sad lesbian. Anyway, Ellie obviously wins this lopsided wrestling match, even after Abby bites off two of her goddamn fingers. Again, could've just shot her in the head. You would've, you would've still had your damn fingers, you dumb girl. And only then, bleeding like a moron in the middle of the ocean, does Ellie finally go, ah, whatever, I don't even care. I don't know why I came out here. You and the last airbender, yeah, you guys have fun. And that's the ending. Boat drives off into the sunset. Nope, gotcha, you gotta go back to the farm. Your pretty lesbian girlfriend is gone. Ellie sits down, tries to play the guitar Joel gave her, but she can't, cause she got her damn fingers chewed off. I get it. You tried to honor the memory of a man by avenging his death, but instead you lost the only part of you still connected to him. Very poetic. Good lesson. Good way to end the game. Nope, gotcha. Not over. We get a little flashback of Ellie and Joel. Ellie says she wants to learn to forgive people. Okay, fine. Good lesson. Good way to end the game. Gotcha. No, it's still fucking going. Now we gotta look at the guitar. Ellie's done with the guitar. What's this pointless zoom? Well, I'm sure we're not gonna see her outside the window walking away like some stupid cliche. Surely this game, which many claim is the pinnacle of video game storytelling, has the courage to end on an ambiguous note to reinforce the idea that Ellie's quest for revenge was a petty, foolish thing, and that she is now only surrounded by broken pieces of what she could have had. So I'm sure they're just gonna zoom in on the guitar, the ultimate symbol of what's been lost, before fading to black and letting the player come to terms with the the fact that Ellie failed. Very poetic, good way to end the game. Gotcha, no, there's Ellie. She's probably gonna go back to town, apologize to her girlfriend. You can't have a truly sad ending. We gotta make sure the weaklings in the audience are coddled with this fake sense of hope. Gotcha, that's it. Oh wait, no, that is actually the end. Okay, thank God. So what do I think about this game? Well, all the parkour stuff is fun. It's fun to run real fast and jump on stuff. I wish this game had a double jump or a jetpack, but I guess it's trying to pretend to be realistic, so you don't get none of that. Puzzles are real bad, most of them are an excuse to show off this game's terrible rope physics. Look at that rope. Yeah, that's what ropes do alright. That is definitely a normal rope. The killing people is fun, but it's not nearly as fun as it could be. Once you get all the weapons and items, it gets a lot better, but man, I sure am tired of these stupid progression systems where I gotta find and eat a hundred random pills to learn how to craft arrows. If you do a second playthrough, you get to start with all the stuff, but man, who wants to play this game twice? Just give me all the murder tools in the first five hours of the game. Also, stop hiding all the goddamn ammo. Who buys a box of bullets then sprinkles them around their house at random? Three bullets in the kitchen cabinet, one bullet in the garage, we've got two bullets on my kid's birthday party table. I'm tired of this bullet scavenger hunt bullshit. Just give me some full boxes of ammo so I can enjoy shooting people in the head without worrying about conserving my bullets. Now the plot is obviously the thing most people are pissed about. Like I said, I don't really care about these characters, so I'm not coming at this like some of these guys arguing Joel would never give out his real name. Joel's like, yeah, let me just go stand in the middle of the room and say hi, I'm Joel, everybody. Joel. Felt like, like you heard of us or something. Cause they have.
Even though the game pretty clearly establishes that he's a soft old man who's likely been lured into a false sense of security from years of living comfortably in a friendly village community. Whatever. Anyway, the plot is kind of all over the place. Ellie's portion is really confusing because you keep finding all these notes about people and factions you haven't encountered yet. And then when you play as Abby, they finally explain what those things are and you're supposed to go, oh yeah, that letter from eight hours ago, that letter makes perfect sense now. But if you're like me, you aren't really keeping track of the hundreds of stupid pieces of paper Ellie shoves in her knapsack. So it's kind of a really shitty and confusing way to tell a story. Now I know everybody on the internet hates Abby and keeps making fun of her, but man, does this game really establish that Abby is the good guy and Ellie is a fucking weird fairy psychopath with PTSD who doesn't know when to let shit go. This game seems to think it's communicating that Ellie and Abby are two sides of the same coin, that morality is all shades of gray, but then it just clearly establishes which side of the coin is the right one. Like at one point in the game, the militia guys are fighting the Amish guys, and you're like, okay, hard-nosed survivalists versus return to the earth hippies. Which of them can be said to be truly right? But then you find out the hippies tried to make the airbender into some warlord's child bride. And you go, well, I think I'm gonna side against the pedophiles on this one. Call me crazy. I think the pedophiles are definitely the bad guys. And the whole plot is like that. It thinks it's teaching you a real big lesson about why killing people is wrong, when really what it's doing is teaching you that it's fun to kill people. It's fun to kill people, it's fun to kill horses, even killing dogs is kind of fun. And I like dogs. And anytime the game slows down enough to give you a little bit of a character moment, let you kind of feel something, it's usually about 10 seconds later you get back to killing hundreds of people, which makes all those little moments feel like stupid jokes. So yeah, I don't know. It's fun to run around and kill stuff. It's fun to look at pretty graphics. It's not fun when some pretentious dude who probably wishes he was making real movies tries to preach at you about why you shouldn't kill pregnant women. You didn't need to tell me it's bad to kill pregnant women, Neil. I already knew that. But this lady ain't real, so you should let me kill her. Give me some DLC where I get to kill the pregnant lady. That's what I want. Final score, gameplay 7 out of 10, plot 4 out of 10. Don't average those numbers together because the gameplay and the plot are not connected to each other in any tangible way. I got a big video on that subject hopefully coming soon, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching my review. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment. Did you like this game? Were you mad that you didn't get to kill the pregnant lady? Do you want more games where you gotta run around and open every goddamn cabinet in the house to find two bullets? You let me know. You tell me if you agree with all them critics saying this game's 10 out of 10. 10 out out of 10 10 out of 10 what are you talking about game critics y'all lost your goddamn minds